What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation, the best baseball community on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Tyler Glass now, who had 5Ks in 5 innings, giving up no runs on only 2 hits. He had these absolute hammer curveballs. I mean, check these things out. He may have the most unhittable curveball in the game. For the last three seasons, he's had over a 50% whiff rate on that curveball. Glass now showed off more than just his curveball. Of course, he had his nasty slider and his upper 90s fastball. He K'd the side with his curveball slider and fastball. Grab some pine by order of the Peaky Blinders. By order of the Peaky Blinders. Here's a home plate view of Glass now slider and curveball, and then an overlay of the two. Hitting looks a whole lot easier from a center field camera angle. Next time you wonder what a hitter's swinging at, well, just think of this. As a bonus, here's Tyler Glass now's curveball. curveball grip. Curveball is, I've played around, I've messed around with these grips a lot. Actually, I used to throw it like this. Uh, I'll switch it up to here sometimes, but now I have it like on a seam to where I take it almost like this, and I want both of my fingers to be on the seam. And I have such big hands that it helps me get in front of it to where I feel like I'm like taking my hands and like ripping down on this. So I feel like I can get like two to 300 extra or like better spin rate on it as opposed to me throwing it like a traditional curveball. I really feel my hand coming off that lace. So I'm throwing it like in front this way. And I'm almost trying to like throw a heater behind me. Like I'm almost ripping it like this. It doesn't feel like that. I'm sure it looks different when you like look at it on Edgertronic, but like for me, feeling the laces in front really helped me like it just gets me like i don't know a little bit more drop on my curveball tristan mckenzie had eight k's in six innings gave up no runs and only allowed two hits and of course mckenzie also has filthy curveballs and look at the drop on these things and because of that drop he often pairs it up with an elevated fastball here's an overlay of mckenzie's elevated fastball and curveball and you can see why those two work well together the elevated fastball protects his curveball and vice versa. Not only did he throw elevated fastballs, though, he also had elevated curveballs and sliders in this game. And as I've discussed before, elevated breaking balls can work, despite conventional wisdom that they should be thrown down in the zone. Robbie Ray had four Ks in three innings. He did give up four runs, but had these dirty sliders. He battled against Kevin Gosman, who had seven Ks in five and two-thirds innings and had these absolutely devastating splitters. He had a 44.5% whiff rate on that splitter this year, and you can see why. But Gosman was more than just his splitter. He also had his upper 90s fastball working and hit 99 miles an hour this game. And the combination of that fastball and splitter, that's where the magic comes in, as you can see in this overlay. Miles Michaelis had three Ks in four and a third innings, giving up two earned runs. He had these gorgeous curveballs and made an outstanding play on this bunt. Because as you know, pitchers are the best athletes on the field. All right, I'm a little biased. He was up against Aaron Nola, who was dominant with six Ks in six and two thirds innings, giving up no runs. Nola showcased his elevated cutters and fastballs, as well as his changeup. And of course, his trademark filthy knuckle curve. Although, to be honest, this camera angle doesn't really do it justice. Blake Snell had 5Ks in three and a third innings, giving up two earned runs, thanks to his curveballs and fastballs. And he was outdueled by yesterday's filthiest starting pitcher, DeGoat, the legendary Jacob DeGrom. DeGrom absolutely annihilated Juan Soto here. I mean, look at this. Honestly, they should have waved off the rest of the at-bat after that first swing. He also totally destroyed Manny Machado with these 101 mile hour fastballs and that six slider. And Machado paid DeGrom the ultimate respect, mouthing good effing pitch after this slider. And DeGrom's slider was filthy. He had a White Castle special and threw 38% sliders this game with a 56% whiff rate. He also averaged 99.4 miles an hour on his fastball. Just a dominant effort by DeGoat Earning himself a butt squeeze from Buck Showalter? DeGoat's dominance was no shocker. Pardon the reference. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Trevor Steffen had this filth. Eli Morgan had this Bugs Bunny changeup. 
Sir Anthony Dominguez had this wicked sinker and slider. Jordan Romano had these six sliders. Adam Adovino had this nasty two-seamer and had this two-seamer and slider overlay. We won't mention the walks. Drew Rasmussen had this knee-buckling slider. Jason Adam was brilliant in relief with these change-ups. Garrett Clevenger K'd the side and had this K-scream. Emmanuel Classe had this filth, although he might have needed a robo-ump on that 97-mile-an-hour cutter. Where did that miss? Cue the trumpets. Edwin Diaz had this overpowering 101-mile-an-hour fastball. Matt Brash had these absolute frisbee sliders. Those things are vicious. But my filthiest reliever from yesterday was Sam Henches. He had six Ks in three innings thanks mostly to his curveballs. A brilliant relief appearance. Opponents only hit 130 against his curveball all season with a 37.5% whiff rate. A fantastic job in relief. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. Is this the Mariners celebrating or a Jewish wedding? What is up, Ninja Nation? We won our parlay yesterday, and I'm going to go back with a three-leg parlay today. I'm going to take Chris Bassett for 5Ks or more, Joe Musgrove for 5Ks or more, and throw in the game to be tied after the first inning. What would your picks of the day be? 